It's great color pink. I see you got dressed for the occasion. I put new batteries in my tie this morning. It's amazing that it's been 25 years and your company co-created the Pink Ribbon, one of now the most recognized names in doing good in the world. What do you think you've achieved in the last 25 years, apart from commitment and I guess, you know, doing a little bit of good? Well, 25 years ago, we started out to try to raise awareness, raise the conversation, the discussion about breast cancer and the impact it has on so many millions of women around the world. That led us to start raising money to fund research to help find a cure for breast cancer. And so our activities have gone from just saying a discussion to finding ways to support the brilliant researchers who are helping us to find a cure. And 25 years, to give you an idea of what the breast cancer community has accomplished, 25 years ago, a woman diagnosed with stage one breast cancer had a 72% chance of living five years. Today, that's over 92%. So in a relatively short period of time, they've done an extraordinary job in getting towards the goal of finding a cure. And just as importantly, the treatments for those who are uh, afflicted with the disease actually are far less intrusive than they used to be. And they are oftentimes, woman won't lose her hair, she yep. might not even really miss much time from work, if at all. And so instead of it being a life sentence, it's now something that we will deal with this and find a way to make it work. And those are the things we're most proud of. I know you also focus a lot on sustainability. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the you know, development goals that you have. But does this have to come from the top? Or is it what consumers are asking for? Well, it comes from both directions. The reality is, is we have to set a direction that motivates our employees to engage our consumers in discussions. And our consumers appreciate it. Our employees appreciate it. Because 95% of our employees are women. 95% of our consumers are women. And this is an issue that they care about and that they know we care means so much to them. I mean, it, it, when I was looking at your sustainability uh, you know, goals, uh, there's everything to do with recycling. Some is, for example, the palm oil used. Again, how do you measure success in this? Does it actually impact on consumer behavior? Or does it, for example, impact on, on uh, you know, the, the talent attraction and, and you keeping talent, so keeping your employees because they think, I'm part of a company that I want to be part of? Everything we do in the area of sustainability and or what you could call CSR, reality is, is it's mostly for your employees and their pride that they take in the company that they work with, as well as how that exudes itself with their consumers. And that makes such a huge difference for us, especially the millennial generation. Well, they don't want to just work for a company. They want to work for a company that they're proud of, that cares and has a value system that they can agree with. But how do you, uh, again, measure success in these kind of things where you have competitors that don't do it or that, or that do it but don't measure it? You know, it's difficult to measure the unmeasurable of happiness, if you will. We, yeah. look, at, we look at the evidence of great employees, great results, and turnover. How often are people who we're hiring in staying in the job? How long are they staying in the job? How well are they doing? And are we achieving our objectives? Certain things are measurable mm -hmm. and certain things are not when it comes to, especially in the environmental world. And a lot of what we try to do is we say, this is the right thing to do, let's do it. We might measure it for ourselves and when it's something that's tangible, we might mm -hmm. say, broadcast that achievement. But oftentimes, it's really making sure you're doing the right thing and, and encouraging your employees. And the leadership of this comes, you have to put a stake in the ground. You have to say, this is where we're going. And you have to encourage everybody to try to get, get to that goal. Because if you don't set the goal, and I guess the, ex the expression is, is, if you can't imagine where you're going, you're never going to get there. Right, and that's true leadership, right? You teach, you teach a, a, a session, a class on leadership. Do you like teaching? I love teaching. I, you know, I started teaching six years ago. It was a lot of work getting going to, to, to understand how to get the message to the students, but I found it so stimulating to work with them and to spend time with them that now we've been doing it, this is six years, so we take these second year MBAs who are somewhere between 27 and 30 years old, and we spend seven weeks with them in three hour sessions where they get to go in depth with some accomplished leaders and leading change and leading in crisis and leading in different issues. And these students come out stimulated and excited. But you know, we learn as much from them too, just from the questions they ask, the comments that they share and their experiences. So learning is not a one way from those of us with gray hair to those who are young. Learning is also 
we learn from the young too. I mean, we have a lot of chief executives watching this program, and thank you for, for your many messages on a daily basis. But what is the number one advice you would give to a, a chief executive or a leader in 2017? Is it different how you're a leader in 2017 to what it was 10, 20 years ago? I think the fundamental principles of leadership haven't changed. The dynamics of how you express that leadership has changed dramatically. Now our ability to communicate intimately with our, with our employees is so much more effective because of technology, because of programs like Bloomberg where we can communicate with our employees yeah. and they can time shift. Yeah. In other words, they can see what we have to say to them in the, on their time in a way that previously you'd have to gather everybody together in an auditorium and you have the conversation or you are issuing a letter or a proclamation. Now it can be much more of a dialogue right. because of what technology enables us. So that like may, social media. Social media, you have, you, have so, you have public social media, yeah. the, but you also have your internal organizational forms of social media and communication. And those vehicles are very important to create that two-way dialogue. It's as much about sitting down, with them, or sitting down with them really and virtually to hear what they have to say and give them a voice into leadership. That would I be, I'd say it's changed dramatically over the last 20 years where leadership is no longer top down, yeah. but there's also a bottom up approach yeah. and how do we as leaders listen right. to those whom we lead uh, uh, your share price is really impressive, and, and this is, you know, you look at this and this is a success story, but do you need morals to be a real leader in, in 2017? The value systems of companies are so important to what makes sustainable success for a company. And if you look at the most successful companies that have sustained their success over a number of decades, you find that those companies have very strong value systems. And the general belief is, is that values eat strategy for breakfast. 